Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called Choose Great Faith in God. So does the percentage of our suffering affect the percentage of our faith in God's goodness? Are we in a faith war with Satan? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will teach you everything you need to know. Guide you to all truth. If you're willing to get saved, if you're willing to get into the Word with the Holy Spirit as your truth teacher, that's like a motto I have. If I got the Bible and the Holy Spirit, I got the greatest truth teaching school on earth wherever I am. I don't need to find somebody that uh, knows more than the Holy Spirit to learn something from. Some human being like uh, Moses or something. It's like the children of Israel wanted to go to Moses to find out what God was saying instead of going to God himself and God wants us to go to himself, not Moses. God wants us to go to him, not a pastor or something like that. Paul got saved. He went out in the desert for three years to learn what the truth was. Not a, He wasn't going hanging around Peter trying to find out what the truth was. He wanted to go be alone with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and find out what the truth was. So a fruit of the Holy Spirit is faith. It's like we're supposed to be trying to say, God, help my unbelief, help my doubt, fill me with faith. God's not going to force us to believe in Him or how much we want to believe in Him. It's like we need the Holy Spirit to show us, how much faith do I really have in God? Show me. And if it's just a little faith, say, help me to have greater faith. Help my unbelief. Help my doubt. It's like Satan was trying to get Adam to doubt in God in the Garden of Eden. And Adam believed his lies and doubted in God with his free will choice. And he had to suffer for those consequences. Jesus was tempted by Satan to doubt in God and his temptation in the wilderness, but he chose to resist Satan. No, I don't believe your lies. No, I, I believe God is good, even though I've been fasting for 40 days and I'm starving. Type thing. And that's what we have to go through, too. A little uh, faith war with Satan. And resist his lies. Because Satan likes to say... God can't be good if you're suffering. God should be like a genie or something. <laughs> Make you healthy and wealthy all the time. And if he's not, then he doesn't exist or he's not good. He's not doing it for you. He's not a good genie for you. <laughs> but the Bible talks about in the faith chapter that there was all these people that had the greatest faith on earth, but yet they suffered the most on earth. Abraham, faith. Uh, Isaiah saw in half faith uh, the children of Israel in the desert maybe faith it didn't say that they became like rich men on earth like the rich man who went to hell or something maybe he believed in a genie God or something <laughs> genie Jesus or something like the prosperity group seemed to want to believe in that uh, God should make them healthy and wealthy all the time it doesn't work for them though when they get to their judgment day, Jesus will probably say, mm, you had the wrong Jesus. I, I never knew you. Depart from me with the rich man in hell. Type thing. So we could see people like Moses having great faith in God, though he suffered a lot. Noah having great faith in God, even though he suffered a lot. Daniel in slavery, great faith in God. Joseph in slavery, great faith in God. John the Baptist living out in the wilderness, eating locusts and honey, getting his head cut off. Great faith in God. Jesus being crucified on the earth. Great faith in God. Through the suffering. Paul and Rat best of prison for two years or something. Great faith in God. It's like you look at the list of the sufferings of Paul's life and you say, wow. He still had great faith in God. And uh, with our sufferings in our life, we need to fight Satan off with his doubt lies or whatever. We got to see how our percentage of faith is when we're, we have a percentage of suffering in our life.
when I start to have back pain, do I start losing my faith in God's goodness or other sufferings and problems in my life? Or am I able to say, no, God's still 100% good right now. He can work these sufferings out for my good. And it's sort of like Joseph saying in his sufferings, they mean it as evil, God means it for good. God has made me to forget about all my sufferings in my past. Paul said, I've learned to be content, and he had a huge list of sufferings. In a rat infested prison, I'm content. The Bible says in God's presence is a fullness of joy. It's like God wants to teach us what his truth is, and then we decide how much we want to put our faith in it or not. A little bit or a lot. Jesus said about them when a storm arose that they had very little faith in him. And I guess Jesus was putting them through a storm to try to strengthen their faith in them. There's a parable in the Bible called the parable of the sower. And it talks about different levels of faith. There's some faith where it's just, uh, it doesn't take root or something. And when trouble comes, it's like Satan comes and snatches the faith out of their heart when trouble happens. God can't be good if you're suffering. Then there's other people that have a strong faith, and it produces a lot of good fruit and good works in their life. They don't let the suffering stop them. They don't let Satan's lies stop them. They believe what God says, even though they're suffering, God can work it out all for their good. It's like a motto I have. <laughs> i got to live in an evil and suffering world, but God can help me through it, bring good out of it for me, make me happy in it, and help me not to be bothered by it. Jesus said about the tribulation, don't let these things trouble you. Don't be bothered by it. I control that. So it says in there, when Jesus returns, will he find any faith in the earth? Jesus said, it's better to believe in God without seeing a lot of miracles. It's a stronger faith when you don't see the miracles. It's a weak faith if you've got to see miracles all the time. To have faith in God. The children of Israel could see miracles a lot, but yet they could doubt in God the next day or whatever. God wants us to have faith in Him even though we don't see Him. We can hear His voice though. I can't see Jesus. I can hear His voice. We need to hear Jesus' voice say things to us prophetically like uh, I'll work these sufferings out for your good. I'm not trying to punish you for your sins with your sufferings. I want to take the punishment for you, Rod. Um... I want to make you as righteous as I am as a gift. I want you to be close to me. If you'll draw close to me and in my presence is a fullness of joy. Be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Regardless of whether you're in slavery to Babylon or slavery to Egypt or slavery to Roman occupied Israel or a slave of the satanic world empire today. If Jesus is with you, you can be happy now. And he can work all your sufferings out for your good. So we have to have that kind of faith. If we got a huge list of suffering in our life, like a pile or mountain or something, back pain and problems with other people and all kinds of stuff. And you just got to say something like, uh, this doesn't have to bother my faith in God. If I got suffering in my life, God knows all about it. He controls it all. He can take it away anytime he wants to. He's trying to build my faith in him through it. Satan's coming along when the suffering start up. Satan's temptations start up to doubt in God in them. You got to keep saying, no, Satan, like Jesus did in the wilderness temptation. God's not bad if I'm suffering. It's understanding uh, from God. How much faith do I have? A little bit, a whole lot. If it's a little bit, let's make it stronger. When I suffer, is it to the percentage I'm suffering, is the percentage that my faith is weakening or something with the temptations? Is Satan's not tempting me? Can I have a strong faith in God through suffering? <laughs> when he's tempting me, can it start to get weaker? And you just got to keep fighting that off. You got to understand what's going on in the moment. I don't want to believe God's bad in my suffering. Satan wants me to believe that way. That's not my voice. That's Satan's voice. I resist it. 
or Satan tries to disguise himself as God's voice. I'm punishing you for your sufferings. <laughs> You're not good enough. Salvation's by works or something. To mess with your mind so that when you're suffering, you think God's just wanting to destroy you or in it or something. Instead of, I want to take all the punishment for you, says Jesus. Look at my cross. I'm not trying to punish you with physical suffering. I want you to resist the devil's lies about that. So that you can have good emotions in suffering. A fullness of peace, a fullness of joy, a fullness of God loves me, God's goodness, worshipping him. Like Paul, after he got persecuted or whipped or something, prison or something, he's singing praises to God and God's opening the prison doors or something. God inhabits the praises of his people. And we have to understand how our different minds work. we got a conscious mind, which is only about 5% filled with knowledge or something. we got a subconscious mind, which is filled with about 95% knowledge or something. And Satan tempts us in our conscious mind. I feel pain. Satan, God can't be good. You're not accessing the scriptures or the truth God's taught you in the past from your subconscious mind that God can work out suffering for your good. It doesn't have to bother you. So you have to Study God's word of truth on his goodness and suffering circumstances from the Bible. you got to meditate on that so that it's more fresh in your conscious mind so that when Satan tempts you, when suffering starts up, you're able to easily resist him more because your conscious mind hasn't forgot about the truth that God is good in suffering. Because if we don't keep putting our attention on God's truth, like it says meditate on the word day and night, and then your way will be successful, our conscious mind loses, it forgets. Now, unless we can access the Holy Spirit's voice or our subconscious knowledge of God's goodness and suffering, it's going to be hard to fight Satan's lies off in our conscious mind if we can't remember the truth that God's good during suffering. So that's what we need to understand, that uh, there is... A faith war going on with Satan. Our conscious mind needs to keep meditating on the truth that God is good all the time, regardless of our sufferings, that salvation is by a gift, is not works, it's not God punishing us with our sufferings. If we want to have a strong faith in God during suffering, we God's given us a free will choice. We could choose to have great faith in Him regardless of the circumstances, like Paul did in his sufferings, or we could choose to start to doubt in God when the suffering started up, then lose our faith. Jesus said when he returns, will he find any faith on the earth during very difficult tribulation time experiences? It's up to us. Figure out uh, whether we got a little faith or a strong faith. If it's little, let's ask God to strengthen it. Teach us about how he's good in suffering in the Bible. Meditate on that truth. Understand the war with Satan we're in. That's not my voice, believe in that stuff, that God can't be good in suffering. Resist it. And you'll have more success when you suffer. You'll have stronger faith in God when you suffer. You'll have a greater faith in God. So that's a bit of a choose great faith in God.